Univibe is one of those effects that is instantly recognizable. I remember the first time I heard it listening to Jimi Hendrix years and years ago as a kid, but it's been used by so many artists over the years to create a sound that is completely unique. And one of my favorite things about the Univibe sound is the story of how it came into being. There's a common misconception about what this effect was meant to be when it was created in the 1960s, but I think the story and the idea behind the effect is actually way cooler than what most people think it's supposed to be. It's been used by literally my favorite guitar players to create some of the best songs and best albums and best performances over the last 50 years. This effect is truly unique. It's one of my favorite things to use on guitar. And in today's video, we're gonna talk more about that. What is the Univibe sound? <laughs> Now, like a lot of people, the story behind the Univibe that I always heard was that it was an attempt, a failed attempt, to recreate the Leslie rotary speaker sound. See, around this time, Leslie's were becoming more and more popular, being used for more than just your typical Hammond B3 organ sound. Producers and artists in the 1960s were starting to put their vocals through Leslie's, putting guitar through Leslie cabinets, and getting this amazing swirling rotary speaker sound. And I always heard that the Univibe was a attempt to try and replicate that and give you the rotary speaker sound in a much more manageable and travel sized package for musicians at the time. But that's actually not where Univibe comes from. The story of the Univibe is actually quite a bit more interesting than that. It starts in the early 1960s in Japan when a young engineer and inventor named Fumio Mieda started to experiment and tinker with a new circuit design for an effect, an idea he had in his head to try and replicate something that he heard on the Japanese airwaves when he was a kid. See, at that time, if you were listening to radio in Japan, depending on the time of day and what part of the country you were in, you might not have actually heard the Japanese radio. Instead, you might have heard Russian propaganda coming from Radio Moscow. This is because the transmitter that Radio Moscow was using was so insanely powerful that the radio waves were actually bouncing off of the ionosphere, part of the Earth's atmosphere, and radiating back down to the surface of the Earth. This is a common radio phenomena. This is how ham radio operators can talk to people on the other side of the globe from their backyard. So the radio broadcast that Fumio was hearing as a kid was Russian propaganda after it had bounced off the atmosphere and come back down to Earth. And this created this interesting, swirling, phasing, distorted effect. He was trying to replicate the sound he heard as a kid in an effect. And he created the first version of what we would now call Univibe in something called the Psychedelic Machine, which had the Univibe sound, but also had a fuzz circuit inside to sort of replicate the distortion that was coming from the fading effect of the Radio Moscow waves bouncing off of the ionosphere and coming back down to Earth. But after some revisions and some more tinkering, he finally settled on the Univibe and the sound that we now know was created. <laughs> Thank you. 
So by 1967, Fumio Mieta was starting to hone in on his circuit design for what would become the Univibe. And he was doing so by scavenging old pieces of medical equipment and things like that for light bulbs and the photocells, which is actually how the Univibe works. The Univibe is based off of something called an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, which is a common concept in things like the synthesizer world. But he was using it to control the pitch modulation or the phase modulation of the Univibe. And this brings up an interesting point. Is the Univibe a phaser or is it a chorus? It's actually kind of neither. It does work a little bit like a phaser, but the overall effect is a completely different sound than your typical phase 90 or small stone. I know that off of what I hear off of the records, the classic songs that were recorded with them, there's a certain sort of lumpy character or inconsistency, inconsistency excuse me, to the quality of the sound that sets it apart from phasing. Um, and it, it makes it a little bit more psychedelic, a little bit less predictable, and there's a little bit of a lump to the sound. I don't know how else to describe it. So like in the pedal uh, pawn version here, the Gypsy Vibe, I feel like that's recreated nicely, like the <laughs> kind of like lopsided phasing thing that they do. And I love that sound, that kind of that inconsistent sort of sweep is really cool to me. By 1968, what we now know as the Univibe went into production by Chenet. And interestingly, this is part of what makes it so difficult to replicate the original Univibe sound in modern units today. The photo cells are almost impossible to recreate because of modern regulations and things like that. But more importantly than that, the actual light bulb, the original light bulb type that was used in the original Chenet Univibe units aren't made anymore. And because of the way that photocell LFO circuit works, the type of light bulb has a massive impact on the sound and the response of the unit. Now, the Univibe that I ended up buying last year, which is the Sir Henry uh, Univibe by Tinsley Audio, was built by a very small operation in uh, Austin, Texas. That unit is known for being a really historically accurate in terms of its sound. Now in 1968, Chennai started shipping the Univibes around and they started to show up in America, where in the summer of 1969, Jimi Hendrix famously used the Univibe during his Woodstock performance, particularly on his rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. And that's one of, if not the first, notable uses of the Univibe effect. Then fast forward after Hendrix's death into the 1970s with artists like David Gilmour of Pink Floyd and Robin Trower using Univibes on some of their biggest hits, it cemented the Univibes place in history as one of the all time great guitar sounds. So yeah, so when I play, I play differently. I, I don't know how to explain that. I just, it depends. I use sometimes with chords and uh, or in the layers of the song to build up some moments. And uh, I like to play some chords with the thumb. And I like the way it, especially if I'm playing with the fuzz, because I'm, I have so many fuzz here right now. I have five fuzz. But yeah, so I like to play like that. Or I go more psychedelic or crazy with, with lots of gain, with fuzz, of course. And then I, I like to play that way too. One of my favorite ways to use a Univibe is to actually combine it with a long ambient reverb, putting the vibe either before the reverb to get a really nice swirling modulation effect to add a great pad sound, or if possible, put the Univibe after your reverb to modulate your reverb trail itself. If you're into ambient sounds, this is a really interesting way to add a new layer of modulation to your reverb sound. It's not done very often.
A more classic example of the way to use a univibe is combine it with a great fuzz and then play something with long sustained notes. Take a single note or a chord or a double stop bend and just lean into it. Let the fuzz and the univibe work together to create that swirling, modulating, seasick kind of sound. This really is an effect that speaks for itself. The thing I love most about Univibe is that it's such an evocative sound, arguably more so than any other effects pedal. Places you at a precise moment in time, near enough to an exact date and location. And for a lot of guitar nerds, it really is the defining effect of the late 1960s. The sound of Woodstock, the sound of anti-Vietnam protests, and the sound of a guitarist, which I think many people truly believed had a Arrive from outer space. Like many other guitarists, I think the holy grail of univibe guitar tone is Jimi Hendrix. Just listen to the Woodstock live recordings, Band of Gypsies, Fillmore East up until his death. For me, when I think of the univibe sound, I think of those recordings. Also a less popular but still equally as inspiring way to use your univibe is use the vibrato circuit, which is modulating the pitch of your guitar sound. If you just add a subtle bit of pitch modulation with the speed ramped all the way to the bottom with a really slow sort of warble, you get this beautiful moving kind of three-dimensional guitar sound. Nowadays, it's easier than ever to get the Univibe sound for yourself. A lot of the big pedal manufacturers are starting to replicate them. Or if you're looking for something that is super accurate to the original sound, there's a handful of great boutique makers that are hand building units one at a time with super high attention to detail to the original specification. Or most modelers nowadays include some kind of Univibe effect. So if you've never used a Univibe, you probably have easy access to one. And I would encourage you to try it out because it's an incredibly creative and inspiring tool. But this is what I would refer to as a character effect, meaning it's something that's not transparent. It's not just changing your sound a little bit, it's completely changing the overall voice of your guitar. And as such, it's something that I think you need to play to. You need to play to the Univibe sound. So that is the Univibe sound. I wanna give a huge, huge thank you to all the players that helped me out in making this video. Obviously, I can't play right now. So to everyone that was a part of this video, a massive thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. I will have all of their links to their YouTube channels, social media profiles, their music, everything down in the description box below. You probably already follow most of these players, but if you don't, check out their information down below. Also, if you're interested in learning more about guitar tone and effects and how to get the sound out of your head through your speakers, I made a video course on that last year called the Tone Course. That's available at retscholguitarcourses.com or via the link down below. Uh, you can get 20% off the Tone Course right now if you use the discount code in the description box below, so check that out. Once again, huge thanks for watching. My name is Rhett Shull, and remember there is no plan B.